Hi, this is Jennifer Timko from Stampin' on the Fly. I'm here today to show you a technique that I used to create this card for the latest release from Picket Fence Studios. Starting with Yupo paper, I used this Wild Plum Alcohol Ink, and it is from the Nature Walk set that I have. It's Tim Holtz. Also, I used a silver mixative and the alcohol blending solution all from Tim Holtz to create this background sheet that, um, isn't it really beautiful? It was kind of hard to cut into it, I'm not gonna lie. But um, I created this and then set it aside to dry, make sure it was pretty well set so that I could continue on with this technique just to see if it could work. I started videoing, I wasn't sure if it was gonna work, so you get to kind of see it um, as it goes. Now I am going to double speed this up just to save you a little bit of your valuable watching time. So using just regular old clear packing tape, I put down the tape on the back side of this fog cardstock that had been cut twice with the new flower negative die from Picket Fence Studios. So you can see, I'm just um, not doing a very good job of measuring actually, but putting this clear packing tape on the back side so that the sticky part will be coming through when I flip it over. So it's uh, pretty quick. I wasn't sure if the packing tape would work, but because it was so wide, I thought it might be the right solution here. And it does seem to have worked really well. So yay for things you already have in your house. So now that I have that, I come back to you with the Yupo paper that I cut using my new Gemini Junior. Uh, talk about a clean cut, it's pretty spectacular. So there's my cut and then because I had it flipped over, all those little pieces were contained inside my die. So then all I do is flip it over and align it back into the previously cut spot. You can see I'm just kind of seating it there. And I just used a wooden skewer. I kind of have these in uh, my stamp room all the time. I use them because they're cheap and easy and replaceable. But I use them to poke out little pieces and parts of dies. And I use them to hold things in place and all kinds of things. So I seem to always have them there. But they were perfect for this. So I'm just pressing on the little pieces and getting it to settle in to the uh, matching spots um, behind. Now I'll start pulling the die up kind of slowly and I can start to see where I hadn't really gotten it to attach. And so I just kind of keep messing with that to get all those little pieces to go in. You can see I missed one. Oh well, that was easy enough to fix. Certainly easier than trying to put together a puzzle piece from all those little pieces. Now I come back here with the second one already done, you can see I can make, I'm making a few adjustments. So what I learned with this is even though I thought this alcohol ink was really set, maybe it's because it's pretty thick, but I did find it transferring a little bit. So now when I'm rubbing it, um, I am actually using it with white paper, but I did have some that had smeared a little bit. So I came back with this little mono sand eraser and just another eraser to kind of clean up the mess here and then push back down to make sure all those pieces were down on that tape. This is another new stamp set from the release. It's called Bright Night. And I picked this great sentiment from the set to stamp onto some black cardstock, just plain old Versamark ink here. I inked it up once, you'll see I think maybe that's good, and then I debated, and so I came back and stamped it a second time because hey, it's a misty, so you can, and that way um, there was no doubt that my sentiment would be for fully stamped for me. So I stamp it a second time, and then I come in with some Wow. Um, it's the fine white um, embossing powder, and I love that it's the super fine because it sticks to these sentiments really well without getting all clumpy, and um, it embosses beautifully. So that's what I'm doing here, getting my embossing done all heated up and saving you the trouble of listening to that because nobody needs to hear that in your videos. And just heating this up and embossing it. I just cut down the sentiment to get it ready to lay down on to my card front. 
and then I decide I'm going to pop it up. So these little Gina K foam squares are new to me. What I found out that I loved, and this was a happy accident because I actually ordered the wrong thing by mistake once, and I ended up with the black ones instead of the white ones. And wow, am I glad I did. So I love the black foam tape, when I'm, especially when I'm doing anything that's dark as like these little black panels because I can pop it up on foam tape and you don't see it from the side. You don't notice it when it's popped up because it's the same color as my panel. And I don't know why, but that just makes my very um, type A personality <laughs> super happy. So when I was pulling those little things out, um, I didn't realize I just got this new white one and I had an aha moment that when you pull this little tab, you can see the little squares pop right out. You don't have them get all messy and all caught up. I mean, it's really kind of a brilliant design. Again, it's the little things. I thought I would show you that part since I had done the black ones incorrectly. Needless to say, my black one is now set up correctly. So here is my card for you today. I hope you enjoy this technique. You can do it with all kinds of um, the picket fence ones. There's the negative leaves die as well that would be super fun. But I hope you'll give this a go and let me know how it works for you. Thank you so much for stopping in today. Hope to see you again soon.